Hello everyone, my name is Shane, and in this video, we're going to be doing an unboxing, and I'm going to give my first impressions on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. This phone is available for pre-order at the time of this video. I'll have some links in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. The retail price is $1,800. This phone comes in five different colors. We have blue, black, cream, which is the color we're going to be checking out here today, and two other Samsung exclusive colors, which are gray and another shade of blue. And there's three storage configurations of this phone. We have 256 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes, which is a free storage upgrade during the pre-order phase. And you can get up to one terabyte of storage and all of these models come packed with 12 gigabytes of RAM. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and check out the Galaxy Z Fold 5. Shout out to Samsung for sending out this review unit ahead of time. So on top here, we have our device. Inside the box, we have some paperwork, a SIM ejection tool, and a USB type C to type C charging cable. Now let's go ahead and check out the star of the show here, the Galaxy Z Fold 5. Have it here in the cream color. Super excited to check this out with you guys. First impressions immediately out of the packaging, really liking this overall design look and feel here of the phone. I noticed that the color is the same as on my S23 Plus that came out earlier this year, but interestingly, the sidings are different colored. So on the S23 Plus, it's a gold, but here on the Fold 5, it's definitely more toned down. It matches the cream color of the phone on the back compared to having two different colors. But taking our first fold here, have a very smooth yet sturdy opening and closing experience when you're closing it. However, opening it seems to be a lot more smooth. The crease might be improved on the Fold 5, but I don't want to make any conclusions just yet since I've been folding this phone open and close for the past year. And on the right side, we have our fingerprint sensor with the power button built in. Above that, we have our volume rockers. We have our 5G antenna have our SIM tray, which is on the other half of the phone. On the bottom, we have one mic, a Type-C port capable of 25 watt super fast charging, have one of our two speakers, and on the top, we have three mics, and we have our other speaker. And more importantly here, you'll see that there is no gap on this phone. Maybe there is the slightest, tiniest bit of gap if you hold it at perfectly the right angle, but if you compare this to the Fold 4 here, it is honestly a night and day difference. And the gap going away isn't the only big change here. We also have another reduction in size of the hinge on the side. So on the Fold 4 here, it looks wider, it looks kind of chubby. And then here on the Fold 5 on the left, it looks a lot more streamlined and slim. We do lose the engraved Samsung logo on the hinge, but this is a well worthwhile trade-off in my opinion, because we are getting obviously a more streamlined look a much nicer feel in the hand as far as the one-handed experience goes, and a lighter weight on this Fold 5. As soon as I took it out of the packaging, I could tell it had a bit of a lighter weight. So I have the Fold 5 coming in at 256 grams. My Fold 4 weighed 267 grams. So this is a significant reduction in weight, especially considering you take the Fold 3 before the Fold 4, 272 grams, and then the Fold 2 before it, we were at 284 grams. In these few generations to go from 284 grams, when you have this heavy of a phone, it honestly makes a huge difference in your everyday use case for it. Overall, physical first impressions, really impressed overall. Nice glossy sidings give you a good grip to open and close this phone. We have nice flat sidings so that you're able to open it and close it very easily. Taking our first look here at the 6.2 inch outer display, to many people's dismay, the screen size has not changed on this outer display from the Fold 5 to the Fold 4. I'm actually happy that they did not change this. I actually love the use case of this phone, having it in the one-handed use case on the outside. And then when you do need that larger display, it's just so easy and accessible and enjoyable to jump into this inner 7.6 inch display. We do have an improvement to these displays, which is a new maximum brightness of 1750 nits, which we'll check out later in the video. And we also have the highly anticipated Snapdragon Gen 2 processor in this Fold 5, which is going to greatly enhance the efficiency and battery life of this phone. So I'm going to go ahead, put my personal SIM card into this phone, use it for the day, and come back with my final first impressions on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. 
All right, so it's been a full day now since I first got my hands on this phone, and I'm definitely ready to share some of my first impressions with you guys, starting with getting into the phone, the biometrics. I absolutely love the side-mounted fingerprint sensor for instantly getting into this phone. It's in a great position for your thumb to rest right on it and get right in. We also have face recognition here, which works very well, even though I usually stick to the fingerprint sensor, but it's nice that this face unlock works on both the outer display in addition to the inner display. And opening and closing between the inner and outer displays is very smooth and surprisingly quiet. It is definitely the best I've used on any fold, not only because of much less clicking and creaking noises, but when closing the phone, it is noticeably softer, which is a nice change of pace from the past folds that are audibly louder and seemingly more forceful when closing them up. Whereas here on the Fold 5, it's just a very nice, soft closing experience, a smooth operation the whole way through. Very impressed with the opening and closing. But on the outside here, we are greeted with the now familiar 6.2 inch display, but we do have an increase in screen brightness here on the Fold 5 of 1750 nits. And I could definitely see this display very well out in direct sunlight last night. But even though the outer display itself hasn't changed all that much, there are a lot of changes going on around it with the new hinge and the new folding design, which makes the one-handed use case of this screen a lot more user-friendly. Obviously, the weight reduction itself has a big part of making it feel nicer to hold, but even more importantly, the reduction in width of the gap we've seen on all of the previous folds makes this Fold 5 feel a lot more slim, which not only enables you to have a better grip of your expensive investment when carrying it out and about, but strangely enough, left-handed usage now feels a lot more viable on this phone, which sounds silly, but the historically large hinge on the side used to make left-handed use of the phone more cumbersome. And what's even more silly to me is that there's a good chance I wasn't ever looking at my Fold's outer displays straight on for all these years, whereas the Fold 5's flatter physical profile means the outer screen is facing directly towards me, which I know it isn't a big deal in real life day-to-day -day use, but to me, all of these physical refinements can really enhance the overall user experience. And as a result, I've really enjoyed using this outer display. I understand that it looks odd from an outsider's perspective, but in real life use, I've found that the balance between the narrow outer screen and the wide inner display that can still be held in one hand makes this one of the most user-friendly folding tablet experiences is currently on the market, and all those little physical changes are making that even more the case here on the Fold 5. A noticeable change I did find are the speakers on this Fold 5. I did a lot of side-by-side -side testing with the Fold 4 and the Fold 5 of different genres at max volume, and I found the Fold 5 speakers to be louder and just more lively in general, despite having less speaker holes at the top and bottom, which was interesting. And the other very much expected to be noticeable change coming here is the Snapdragon Gen 2 Pro processor packed inside this phone. In my average use, I found the performance of my games to be very smooth without taking a massive hit on my battery, and after a one hour gaming session, the Fold was only slightly warm in the area of the processor. This is the same processor found in the S23 phones that came out earlier this year, and it's a big part of what makes those phones so good and so special. So to have this here now on the Fold, while it may not be a super flashy talking point for a YouTube video, it greatly enhances the efficiency and the battery life this phone can achieve. Now, in my first full day of usage, I was only able to get a little over five hours of screen on time, which doesn't seem significant, but I've been throwing everything I can possibly think of at this phone over the past day with the brightness set to full, listening to a lot of music at max volume, using the tablet portion for the large majority of the time since I was hanging around the house, playing games, testing out the cameras for this video, all while the device is still learning my usage patterns. Overall, this is a metric that tells me the worst case scenario battery life for this phone is going to be five hours and change, which makes me very optimistic for how this battery can be stretched out. So stay tuned for my short-term review coming soon where we'll dive deeper into the subject. But another subject I know a lot of people are curious about is the S Pen, since a lot of people I've heard from are looking to just have a built-in stylus to the fold similar to the Note and S22 and S23 Ultra phones. But unfortunately, this is not the case again. 
However, Samsung has drastically reduced the size of the S Pen this year alongside having a slimmer case. So we have a two part case here, just like all of our other previous cases, but you'll see here that it is slimmed down significantly compared to the Fold 4 edition. Now there's a little slider here that you press and that is going to unlock the S Pen out of the case. So you can have this clipped here and you don't have to worry about it coming out, but you just go ahead, press this down and then you can just take the S Pen right out. But this is a very similar S Pen to the S21 Ultra S Pen that we had. And also a change here on this new S Pen is that there's no longer a retractable tip on this one compared to the previous generation Fold 4 and 3 that had that retractable tip on it. I can definitely tell the difference of the writing experience here without having that retractable tip. It's really nice writing and drawing experience here. I feel like it's the proper length. It's not shorter like the S23 Ultra S Pen is, which just kind of bothers me if I want to be doing a more extensive writing or drawing session. So while the S Pen is not built into the fold, once again this year, I think this is a good revision, a good step from what we had last year and just a more portable option. And now I'm going to always have the S Pen with me no matter what, which is really nice. As far as the cameras go, we have a very versatile setup here with a 50 megapixel primary lens and an ultra wide lens and a three times optical zoom lens. We also get up to a 30 times zoom on this phone, which seems to have Samsung's new A. AI features built in to sharpen text because I noticed the text on this Willow Street picture from 30 times zoom is really sharp and clear. I'm also very happy with the video quality, really good picture here in the 4K 60 setting and also just walking around and moving with the phone. It films really smooth video, feels like a very similar camera experience to the S23 and S23 Plus. So overall that goes without saying, I'm very pleased with the cameras on this phone. I will say that the form factor itself is still a little tough for me to use such a small viewfinder on the outer display but as you'll find with using any aspect of this fold jumping into that inner display is just going to give you that really good experience and that is why i love this form factor of having the one-handed experience on the outside that amazing inner display whenever you do wanna be able to jump into this at a moment's notice. It is so helpful having a large display out on the go. It's so easy to be able to share pictures with loved ones and others. You don't have people looking at a tiny little, check out this picture of my family on this five inch screen or whatever. No, you have a full tablet here that you can show people things very easily. Opens up a lot of opportunities for productivity for multitasking. There's just so many more use cases that are opened up with this Fold. And overall first impressions, I'm very impressed with this Fold 5. I know that the media and other coverage is probably gonna say this isn't that big of an upgrade. It's not that big of a year for the Fold. While it is true in some aspects where the screens haven't really changed a lot, there's a lot of good changes happening to the overall design, making it a much more user-friendly device. I am really excited to further test the battery with the new processor in this phone, but I'm curious to hear your initial thoughts on the Galaxy Z Fold 5 down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the Shane Simons YouTube channel today because we definitely have some more videos coming up. We have a flip unboxing. We have the official Samsung case lineups for the fold and flip coming after after that and then I should have some content coming on the tab s9 ultra you can check out those videos over here if you're watching this video a little later thanks so much for watching take care